In this video, I'm going to share with you 13 reasons why new electronic hardware products fail, and more importantly, how to make sure yours does not fail. Learning from your own mistakes is usually just part of the process of developing and selling a new product, but what's even more efficient is if you can instead learn from the mistakes of others. Studying the failures of others can actually ensure that you do not make the same mistakes they did. I know when I brought my own hardware product to market, I definitely made a lot of mistakes. However, I gained so much valuable knowledge from both the things I did right and the things I did wrong. Helping others avoid these mistakes is really my primary focus now. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm an engineer, entrepreneur, and the founder of Predictable Designs. The top reasons that new hardware companies or startups or new hardware products fail can broadly be divided into three categories. You have technical reasons, you have financial reasons, and then you have sales and marketing reasons. So we're going to look at those three groups separately. The first one are the technical reasons why hardware startups or hardware businesses fail. Technical issues generally occur during the development and early manufacturing stages. The more complicated the product, the more challenging it will be to avoid mistakes during these stages. Okay, so we're going to start with number one. The number one reason, technical reason, why hardware companies or hardware businesses fail is underestimating product development. Product development is complex, expensive, and almost always takes longer than anticipated. Even big tech companies developing new products always struggle to estimate the time and cost required. I've worked on many large product development teams, and it's extremely rare for any project to actually go better than expected. It's always the other way around. There will always be unexpected challenges regardless of the experience level of the developers. Technical reason number two is underestimating the complexity of scaling to mass manufacturing. Entrepreneurs tend to completely neglect the complexity, cost, and time needed to scale their product from a prototype to mass manufacturing. In fact, I'd say this is the most forgotten step in launching a new product. From a very early development stage, you need to be thinking about how to design your product so it's easy to manufacture. And this is called Design for Manufacturing, or DFM. The sooner you begin incorporating DFM practices into your design, the easier and less costly it will be when it comes time to scale to mass manufacturing. Technical reason number three that hardware products fail is insufficient quality testing. You've put an, in an enormous amount of time, energy, and money to get your product ready for market. You do not want to ruin this opportunity by shipping faulty products to your customers. In the early stages of manufacturing, it's definitely best to err on the side of too much quality testing. This is true even if it means you won't make a profit initially. A sure way to kill a startup is to ship a bunch of defective units. Reason number four is the product is just too complicated. You may have heard the phrase feature creep before. It's a common mistake made by a lot of entrepreneurs. You're passionate about your product, so you want it to be perfect. This means not only must everything work perfectly, but your product must also have every conceivable feature. This can be a great strategy if you have unlimited capital and unlimited time. Maybe in 10 years, you'll have a perfect product. Okay, sorry for the sarcasm, but I just wanted to drive home the point. Obviously, no one has unlimited time or unlimited uh, money, so this strategy is almost always a bad idea. Instead, start by developing the simplest version of your product with only the core required features. Get that version on the market so you can begin to gather feedback from real customers. Then use that feedback to create the new and improved version 2.0 of your product. This is a strategy commonly employed when developing software, but it also works great for hardware products. Technical reason number five is overpromising to customers. Don't promise something you, until you have it in your hands, regardless of when your development team says something will be ready. It's best not to promise anything until you have tested the product yourself. On the other hand, it's good to have customers involved as early as possible. I'm not advocating that you ignore customers until you have inventory ready to ship. Keep them updated on your progress and perhaps give them some approximate dates. 
Just don't overpromise on what you can deliver. Okay, so now we've looked at the technical reasons why hardware products fail. Now we're going to jump in and we're going to look at some of the financial reasons. Many entrepreneurs think if only I had more money, I could quickly and easily launch my product. Money will solve everything, right? Well, not really. Fortunately, not having lots of money can actually be a positive thing. This is because it forces you to make smarter choices. That being said, you still need some money to get started. Generally, you'll need to fund at least the initial, initial stages of development. In most cases, you should take your product far enough that you can then get others interested in investing in the, the product so you can finish the development. Okay, reason number six that hardware products fail is they ran out of money. This may be the most common reason why hardware startups fail, although it's rarely the fundamental reason. For example, if you run out of money because you underestimated the development cost, then I'd say the problem wasn't that you didn't have enough money. The problem was that you underestimated how much money you needed. Most reasons for failure eventually lead to running out of money. Perhaps you develop the wrong product that no one wants, and you don't have enough money to create the product that people actually do want. Your problem wasn't a lack of money. Your problem was not knowing your customer. You should focus on understanding what lies ahead so you can plan out how to surpass your financial obstacles before you hit them. Reason number seven is insufficient profit margins. When doing small batch manufacturing in the beginning, your profit margins will be low or even non-existent. And this is because you're not yet getting the advantage of economies of scale. As your manufacturing volume increases, your product cost per unit will decrease significantly. Once you have manufacturing and sales flowing smoothly, you'll likely begin spending considerable time striving to lower your production costs without sacrificing product quality. This is how you're going to increase your profit margins. In the early days, a low profit margin may be acceptable but you have to eventually make a profit to be able to sustain your company, yourself, and your family. Even in the beginning, having low profit margins will make growing your startup much more challenging because you won't have significant profit to invest back into your company. You need to know your cost of goods sold, also just short called COGS, at various production levels in order to forecast your profit margin. And COGS is the total cost to manufacture and ship your product. It's key to determining your profit margin. Failure reason number eight, underestimating production and inventory cost. Underestimating the production cost is one of two elements leading to the low profit margins I just discussed. You only have two knobs to turn in order to adjust your profit margin. Either you decrease your cost of goods sold or you increase your sales price. If your profits are lower than expected, then you've either underestimated the production cost or you've overestimated how much people are willing to pay for your product or maybe a little bit of both. Also, if you underestimate your manufacturing costs, then you'll also underestimate the cost of inventory. Failure reason number nine is overestimating the sales price. This is the other side of the coin from underestimating the production cost. If you overestimate your sales price, then your profit margins will be lower than expected. Unless you can make up for this by lowering your cost of goods sold, a lack of profit margin will kill your startup. A company with low margins is very difficult to push forward towards sustainability. Reason number 10, cash flow. Cash flow is a huge problem for startups, hardware startups, or any startup that has a physical product that they must carry. It's likely the biggest problem after you get manufacturing up and running. Most manufacturers are going to require a partial payment up front with the remaining amount due before they ship the order. Regardless of how you sell your product, there will be a length of time between when you spend the money to buy inventory and when you finally get paid by your customer. This creates a serious cash flow problem. For example, let's say a big retailer wants to purchase $1 million of your product. This means that you're going to need to finance about half of that, or $500,000, for probably two to four months. 
Purchase order financing and invoice factoring are two common ways you can finance this amount. Although my favorite inventory financing option is called manufacturer financing, which is what I used for my own product. Basically, the manufacturer agrees to let you pay them after you get paid by your customers. This can essentially eliminate your early cash flow issues. Okay, so now we've, we've looked at the technical reasons for failure, uh, the financial reasons for failure, and now we're going to look at sales and marketing reasons why hardware products fail. Most entrepreneurs focus all of their effort on product development while neglecting the most important part of launching a new hardware product, selling it. Without sales, nothing else you do really matters. For many entrepreneurs, the idea of actively selling is downright scary, especially for more technical entrepreneurs. I know because it was terrifying for me. It forced me way outside of my comfort zone. But to be successful as an entrepreneur, you absolutely need to embrace going outside of your comfort zone. If an introvert like me can muster the courage to present to large retailers manage a team of 20 salespeople, and run a trade show booth, then so can you. Okay, so now we're going to look at the sales and marketing reasons for failure. And we're at number 11. Number 11 is they failed to know their end customer's needs and wants. Do not mistake positive comments from potential customers as proof the product will sell. Just because someone says they like your product or that they would purchase it does not really mean they will purchase it. Nothing speaks the truth like actual sales. This is one of the biggest challenges with hardware products. You need sales feedback as soon as possible, yet it takes considerable time and money to get a hardware product ready to sell. It's a catch-22 situation. My favorite solution to this problem is crowdfunding, where you can get people to vote for your product using actual money before you have it ready for market. But do you know the easiest way to get customer feedback? Shockingly, it's to simply talk to your customers. Okay, reason number 12 is they did not build an audience around their product. Stop what you're doing right now and begin building an online audience around your product. This allows you to grow your audience slowly in the background while you develop the product. This is what the founder of Pebble Technology did. He built up an email list of around 6,000 email subscribers during the years he was developing the first Pebble smartwatch. Having this email list was key to raising over $10 million from his first Kickstarter campaign. Without an email list of interested customers, you will never have a successful crowdfunding campaign. You need this audience to help you develop a product that people actually want to buy and to help raise money through crowdfunding if you do go that route. Okay, finally, reason number 13 hardware products commonly fail is they did not begin sales and marketing soon enough. If you are a technical founder who hates marketing, then your best bet is to bring on a co-founder with marketing experience. Startups with two founders, one with a technical background and one with a marketing or sales background, is an ideal combination. If bringing on a co-founder isn't an option for you, then you will need to embrace marketing yourself. I'm a very technical person, but over the years, I've learned to really enjoy marketing. Just like any complex problem, marketing can be looked at as almost a puzzle in need of a solution. And with the right mindset, it can be just as fun as product development.